All right, guys, in this video, let's take a closer look at state and the set state method in React. Before we start, though, let me point out that I will be using the ES7 React snippets extension for the rest of the series. It has some great snippets, which will save us some time, as we will see in this video. Now, to help us understand the do's and don'ts with state and set state, let us create a counter component. We will basically have a count value and a button to increment that count value. I'm going to start off by creating a new component called counter.js. So within the components folder, a new file, counter.js. Since we are learning about state in class components, this is going to be a class component as well. And with React snippets, I can type RCE and tab out, and we have a class component. I only want the default export though, so I will remove the name export. Within the div tag, I'm going to have the text count, and then let me add the counter component in the app component. So counter and make sure to import it at the top. If you quickly take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text count. Now let's go back and build our counter component. The first thing we need is a count state to keep track of the counter value. And we initialize state in the constructor. The snippet is our const. So constructor, a call to super, and then this dot state, which is an object. And the state object has a property called count initialized to zero. Now we can bind this state value with curly braces. So within the render method, count hyphen within curly braces, this dot state dot count. Next, let's add a button to increment the count value. So I'm going to add parentheses to the return statement, add an enclosing div tag, move the div tag within the return statement, and then add the button element. So button tag, the text is going to be increment, and we listen to the click event very similar to the last video. So on the opening button tag, on click attribute, this is going to be equal to curly braces and an arrow function within the curly brace. Again, don't worry about the arrow function syntax for now. Just know that when you click on the button, the increment method is called. And of course, this has to be this dot increment. Now let's define the increment method right after the constructor increment. And if you can recollect, I mentioned in the last video, when we have to change the state of the component, we need to use the set state method. But you might be curious as to what will happen if we don't use it and try to change the state directly. Let's try it out within the increment method, this dot state dot count is equal to this dot state dot count plus one. We are basically incrementing the count value by one. I am also going to simply log the updated count value in the console. So console dot log this dot state dot count. So we are basically trying to fetch the current value of count, increment it by one and reassign that value. Let's save this and take a look at the browser. I'm going to open the console and now I will click on the increment button. When I click, you can see that the value is not incremented in the UI. In the console though, you can see that it has changed from zero to one. If I click again, 
In the UI, it is still 0, but in the console, it is now 2. Few more clicks, and you can see that it's the same. 0 in the UI, but increments in the console. What this means is that the UI is not re-rendering whenever the state is changing. And this is the main reason we should never modify the state directly. The only place where you can assign this dot state is the constructor. Any other time to change the state, set state method has to be used. So let's make the change and see if it helps. This dot set state. This accepts an object. The count value is going to be this dot state dot count plus one. If you now save this and take a look at the browser, click on increment, you can see that the count value in the UI increments to one. So the very first do's and don'ts with state is never modify the state directly. Instead, make use of set state. When you modify the state directly, React will not re-render the component. Set state, on the other hand, will let React know it has to re-render the component. Now there is one detail to observe with set state. In the browser, you can see that when we click on increment, the value is one. But if you take a look at the console, the value is zero. So the console value is one less than the rendered value. And this is because calls to set state are asynchronous. So what is happening is console.log over here is being called before the state is actually set. Many a times in your application, you might want to execute some code only after the state has been updated. To handle such a situation, you can pass in a callback function as the second parameter to the setState method. So the setState method has two parameters. The first parameter is the state object and the second parameter now is the callback function. The callback function will be an arrow function. And within the function body, let's log to the console. Callback value, which is going to be this dot state dot count. So I've just formatted the code and you can see that this dot set state first parameter is an object which sets the state value. And the second parameter is the arrow function where we simply log the updated state dot count value. So we have one console log value outside the set state method and one within the callback function within the set state method. Now, if we save this and take a look at the browser, click on the button and in the console, you can see that we have a value of zero and then callback value of one. The same value of one is also rendered in the browser. If you go back to the code, zero is from the synchronous console log statement and one is from the callback function console log statement. So this brings us to the second do's and don'ts. Whenever you need to execute some code after the state has been changed, do not place that code right after the set state method. Instead, place that code within the callback function that is passed as a second parameter to the set state method. Let's take a look at the next scenario. When we try to use the current state to calculate the new state value, the code is working as expected. We don't see any problem. The increment is working fine. Now that is simply because the current scenario is pretty simple. Let's make the scenario slightly complicated. I'm going to create a new method called increment five. And within the body, 
I simply call the increment method five times. Definitely a strange piece of code, but it helps understand the finer details of the set state method. Also now on click of the button, we are going to call this dot increment five. So the count should increment from zero to five when we click on the button. Let's save this and take a look at the browser. When I click on the button, you can see that the value changes to 1 instead of changing to 5. And in the console, strangely, 0 is logged 5 times and even the callback value of 1 is logged 5 times. Now why is this? This behavior is because React may group multiple set state calls into a single update for better performance. So what happens in our scenario is that all the five set state calls are done in one single go and the updated value does not carry over between the different calls. So whenever you have to update the state based on the previous state, we need to pass a function as an argument to set state method instead of passing in an object. So this dot set state and as the argument we pass in a function again because we use ES6 we pass in an arrow function as a parameter to the arrow function we get the previous state of the component so the parameter I'm going to name it as previous state And within the body, we set the count state value to previous state dot count plus one. So very important you make note of this difference. We are not using the current state. Instead, we are always using the previous state. This is going to give us the right results. Let's save this, go back to the browser, click on increment and the count is displayed as 5. Increment again and the count is 10. We are able to correctly render the UI based on the state. The console values logged are from the synchronous console log statement and can be ignored for now. So this is the last do's and don'ts. When you have to update the state based on the previous state, make sure to pass in a function as an argument instead of the regular object. The function has access to the previous state which can be used to calculate the new state. And as it turns out, the second parameter to this function is the props object. So if your new state is dependent on props as well, props dot add value maybe you can go with the function parameter approach and make use of props okay that is pretty much it to quickly summarize point number one always make use of set state and never modify the state directly second point if certain code has to be executed after the state has been updated place that code in the callback function, which is the second argument to the set state method. And finally, the third point, when you have to update state based on the previous state value, pass in a function as an argument instead of the regular object. So that is about set state in React. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.